Namaste, everybody. Thank you for joining today. As always, please practice according to your condition and your ability level and your comfort level. If you know the variations, feel free to do them. If um, if not, then please um, feel feel free feel free to accommodate your practice as you need to in order to make it um, accessible to you. So on that note, let's begin. Let's begin. Sitting tall, still, close the eyes and bring the attention inward. Nothing to do, nothing to seek. Everything we need is already within. Let's begin with the sound of Om three times to attract divine attention. Imagine you're everywhere. on God alone. everywhere be happy and free from suffering and enjoy this practice to our senses may we acquire a strong desire for liberation from pain and suffering and may we cherish no ill feelings against each other only peace love joy and compassion om shanti 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 Let's now do the mantra for purification to purify the space, the grounds, and all the psychic channels within. If you know it, you can do it along with me, of course. If not, just imagine you're chanting through the voice of the Guru, and you derive all the benefits as though you're chanting the words perfectly. Om Pavitraha Pavitra Wa Sa Wa Vashtanga Topi Wa Ya Ha Smarit Pantrikaksham Sa Baya Pyantra Has Ji Om Pavitra Ha Pavitra Wa Sa Wa Vashtanga Topi Wa Ya Ha Smarit Pantrikaksham Sa Baya Pyantra Has Ji Om Pavitra Ha Pavitra Wa Sa Wa Vashtanga Topi Wa Ya Ha Smarit Pantrik Aksham Sa Ba Ya Bhyantra Ha Sjihi So now let's do alternate nostril breathing. It's the main breathing 
and it's very beneficial. It can be done at any point in the day. So we're going to do it with the breath retention. 4, 16, 8 is a count. So imagine, um, actually, so actually we'll, we'll take it down to 3, 12, 6. So the 3 is for the inhale, the 12 is for the breath retention, and the 6 is for the exhale. For the, uh, so we're inhaling through the active side, holding the breath. As you hold the breath, you plug the nose, you gauge the throat in a root lock, which I'll explain in a moment. Exhale through the less active side. Inhale back through the less active side immediately. And then again, you close both nostrils, you hold the breath, and then exhale through the active side. So you begin and end on the active side. For the breath retention, um, you apply the throat lock, as I said. So to do the throat lock, through the inhale, you're breathing in, you're inflating the lungs, you're raising the chest, so that when you hold the breath, you can bring the chin down to the chest without bending your back too much, without rounding your back. So you try to keep your back nice and straight, and all you have to do is bring your chin down on the chest. The tongue goes to the roof of the mouth behind the teeth, <clears throat> and he touches at the space between your eyebrows. It's the throat lock. For the root lock, contract all the muscles of the pelvic floor muscles. Imagine you're lifting them up, the pelvic floor, and, and uh, pushing up right up against the navel. So you get this feeling that you're locking everything. You're, yeah, so you're trying to, um, yeah. You just imagine you're pushing the belly button towards the front of the spine and up and in. So that is the brute lock. And for the active nostril, we'll find it now. So first of all, left hand in Yana Mudra, second finger and thumb connected, other three fingers straight on the left knee. The right hand, the second finger fold down, fold down to the palm. This is Vishnu Mudra. When you turn the palm towards you, it's no longer Vishnu Mudra. It is a mudra used for pranayama. The thumb is used for the right nostril, the right ring finger for the left nostril. Always just use those two fingers. So now for the active nostril, plug off the, at the right side first, block off the left side. <laughs> Breathe in and out a few times to the left. And then do the same on the right. So you block off the left nostril now with the right ring finger. <laughs> Whichever side feels more open is your active side. If it feels exactly the same, just default to your left side is your active side. So I'll just do it. My right side seems to be my active side. Usually they change every two hours. So I'll demonstrate with the right side as my active side. So sit up tall and straight. And to the lungs on the next exhale. Then close off the less active side. Inhale through the active. Three, hold the breath, apply the throat and root lock, third eye tension. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Exhale through the less active side. Two, three, four, five, six. Inhale through the less active side. Two, three, hold the breath, third eye attention. Two, three, four. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Exhale out through the active side. Two, three. Synchronize it so that you're completely empty by the sixth count. Five, six. Inhale. Two. Hold the breath. Two, three, four, five. Contract the root muscles. Pull out towards the navel. Seven, eight. 10, 11, 12. Exhale up through the less active side. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Inhale through the less active side. Inhale as fully as you can for three counts. Hold the breath for 12. Remember to keep the back straight. 10, 11. Exhale back out to the active side. Two, three, four, five, six. Inhale, active. Three, hold the breath. Tongue to the roof of the mouth behind the teeth. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Exhale out through the less active side. Three, four, five, six. 
six. Continue again. Left side, um, less active side. Hold the breath for 12. <clears throat> 10, 11, 12. Exhale out through the active side. Two, three, four, five, six. Inhale. Hold. Exhale, less active. Inhale, less active. Hold for 12. Exhale through the active for six. Inhale. Hold. Everything stops, all the mind fluctuations, the body movements, and the emotions as though they were frozen. Exhale out through the less active side. Inhale, less active. Hold. Exhale up. Active. We'll do one more. Inhale. Hold. Exhale, act, that's active. Inhale, less active for three. Hold for 12. Exhale, out through the active. And release. Stay for a moment, close the eyes, and just notice any changes in the state of mind, emotions, or the body. Be undisturbed and unconcerned as to whatever you observe. For you are not the body, nor the mind, nor the emotions. You are beyond all that. Your true nature is the nature of God, which is love, which is wisdom, courage, power, all these qualities, compassion. And through the practice, through the imitation of forms of all beings, we manifest that beauty and the divinity of God and the grace of God through all our actions, thoughts, and words. So we just see how we can, um, we see how we can tap into those divine qualities of every being, which are manifest in so many amazing and wonderful ways and through all the forms. So now imagine throughout the practice that you are tuning to that highest consciousness Consciousness of the consciousness of the highest self within each form. And let's put that into practice now. So let's come to standing. <clears throat> So stand, we'll do spiritual breathing first to establish a deeper connection with the divine essence within. Separate your feet about ten inches. Bring your arms above the head, the palms slightly turned up. From the fingertips, inhale down through the arms and into the spiritual heart. Locate the center of the chest and the right side of the physical heart. Then holding at the heart, hold the breath. All the attention is the spiritual heart. Exhale out through the arms, just the breath leaves back out. 
four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale down into the heart. Two, three. Draw in the best, the best universe. Five, six, seven, eight. Holding it all in the heart. Hold the breath again to keep the attention there, to keep all the benefits there. Exhale out through the fingertips again. Leave, bring it, um, keep everything that you pulled in side. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale one more time. Bring in everything that you need. Two, three, <coughs> seven, eight. Holding in the heart as an offering to all beings. Exhale out the arms. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now release the arms. Continue with the exercises to prepare the body for the practice. Pretending the witness watching the body moving all by itself. So now just swing one side to the other. People as though the arms are very heavy. Slapping against the body any which way. And now start to move the shoulders more quickly. Feels like the arms were dead. Now the head to fly in all directions. The arms again and just hitting the body in which way. And then start to slow it down. Hands on the hips and circle the head, making large circles. Feels though the head very heavy. It just falls from one side to the other, back and in front and in back. Not even a little steel on the top of the neck. And then switch the direction of rotation. Try to see the floor in all the directions as the head moves around. Good. And now the right arm circles forward. Feels like holding a weight of five pounds in your hand. And then backwards, make as though you're about to throw a ball, winding up. And then the other arm, left arm forward. And again, feel that heaviness in your hand to you carry the arm into the movement more easily. And then release. Now from here, take hold the opposite elbows over the head and then bend to your left. And then go to the right, push the hips out towards the left. And then to the left again, try not to make folds in the underside of the body. Come up, go to the other side. And then coming up, and making little circles over the head, like a helicopter propeller. Mostly the head, shoulders, and neck moving right now. And then make the circles a little bit larger, the chest, the upper back come into the movement. <clears throat> And now the whole torso swings down. And then coming right back up. And then change the direction to again, starting off small circles. And then start to make the circles a little bit bigger, adding in the chest and the upper back into the movement. And then if you feel apt to do so, the whole torso circles. And then coming right back up. Release the arms, shake out the wrists, move the fingers very, very rapidly. It's as though you had no control over the hands from moving all by themselves. And then up and down, loosen up the wrist completely. Good, next one's called lion's breath. We're gonna pretend that you're, we're lions, pouncing. The eyes go wide and the tongue hangs out of the mouth. It's good for releasing tension. So when you bend down, you can just go as far as you can. Just be mindful of your knees. Let's go.
come back up. And then one more. Take the arms out to the side. If you need to, you can bring your hand on a wall or a chair and then swing the right leg back and forth. Try to lean forward a little bit so the knee comes to the shoulder, perhaps. And then swing the leg all the way back as you can kick yourself in the head from behind. And then the other side. And then release. Now let's continue our warm up with some rounds of Surya Namaskara. Bring the hands to the heart, close the eyes here for a moment. Remember the words from the Bhagavad Gita knowledge is better than practice, meditation is better than knowledge, renunciation of the fruits of action is better than meditation. Peace immediately follows such renunciation. So now let's practice with that intention of offering up all the fruits of the practice. Imagine this as your divine duty to all beings everywhere. Just do the practice because it must be done. Raise your arms up over the head, reach up and back, arch the back a little bit if you can, and then come down. Bend your knees if you need to, bring your hands flat on the ground. Right foot back, lower the knee down, sink down to the seat. Then come into high plank, lower down the knees. The seat comes all the way back behind the heels. Glide forward, it's your cobra. Pull the body between your arms. Come all the way back, the seat again behind the heels. Tug at the floor with the arms as though you're trying to pull the floor towards you. And come forward and up. This will help to propel the body forward for more power and ease. One more time, glide forward, brush your nose to the ground and raise ahead, all the way up and back. Pull over your toes, back into Adho Mukha Savanasana. Allow the heart to melt between the arm, uh, between the shoulder blades, the head to come down towards the ground. And then the right foot steps forward to the hands. If it's hard to get to the foot there, lower the back knee down. The foot doesn't, still doesn't make it all the way. Use your right hand to assist the foot forward. Sit down to the seat. And then bring the feet together, chest on the sides, head down. Come right up to stand, reach up and back. Hands back to the heart. Raise your arms again, stretch the whole front of the body. Come forward and down, Uttanasana. Left foot back. Don't worry about the breath, just move the body in a way that feels natural and comfortable. Into plank, knees, chest, knees down and the seat all the way back. Glide forward, just move the body and the breath will follow and deliver fluidity and ease and movements. All the way back again. Glide forward. Hips come to the hands, the chest forward, and the head back. All the way back again. Glide forward. Make sure you tell us if your neck out of Make sure you don't lose your neck. Drop your shoulders down. Roll over your toes. Back into Adho Mukha Savanasana. And then the left foot steps forward to the hands. Make the adjustment as you need to to make the movements more easy and then more um, accessible. Chest on the thighs, head down. Come right to center, reach up and back. Hands back to the heart. Raise your arms, create space, approach to nature, which is boundless, infinite in its potential. Chest on the thighs, right foot back, sink down to the seat. Shoulders back so the chest stays open and large into plank. Knees, chest, forehead down. Sink the chest between the hands. Come forward and up into the cobra. Adho Mukha Sukhanasana. Lift the seat up and back. Melt the heart towards the ground. The right foot steps forward. Sit down to the seat. Feet together, Uttanasana. Bowing down his own humbleness. Come right up to standing, reach up and back. Hands back to the heart. Imagine you're a shapeshifter moving between the forms with ease, with effortlessness. Come down and try to merge with all forms, the left foot back that you represent for your practice into the high plank. 
Lower down, knees, chest, forehead down. Come forward and up, twist, try to copy the forms as best as you can. And all the way back on all levels, mentally, physically, and emotionally. And then left foot steps forward to the head, sink down to the seat. Feet come together, bow to the legs. Come right up to stand and reach up and back. Hands back to the heart. So just adding a few more moves and raise your arms up, reach up and back. Fold down into Uttanasana. Now chest lands on the thighs, join the hands behind the back, telescope your chest further forward, and then plunge the head towards the earth. Use the body, push the legs back. Try to get your hands as far forward in front of your head as possible. If you're very flexible, you might be able to get your legs straight, your seat directly over the heels, the forehead, then it could come to the shins. If not, keep your body, your knees bent so your belly can still rest on your legs. And from here, the hands come down, right foot back, lower the knee down, sit down to the seat. Inhale, come up, lift the seat at the same time as your arms come up. Exhale, circle the arms down, allow the head to fall back. Inhale, come up again. Pull the torso out of the hips, exhale, circle the arms down. And come up again, lose yourself in the sensations. Imagine all beings experiencing this through your body. Circle the arms down. Keep your seat low this time. Bring your arms up and back, kapyasana. If you can, join your hands together. Pull the finger, the arms back behind your ears or beside the ears. And then from here, bring your hands back down. Plant in your hands, you can either come in high plank, if you feel able to do so, lift the left leg all the way up and back, three-legged dog. Now come forward into high plank, shoulders over the wrists, go the elbows sides of the body. If you can, bring your chest down. If you need to, you bring your knee down at the same time. And glide right through into the cobra. Roll around your back, roll over your toes, back into downward facing dog. Now the right leg comes all the way up and back again or not again, but it comes up and set the foot between the hands. Try to run the foot quietly, don't make big loud noises. Again, raise the arms up with the head, lift the seat, exhale, circle the arms down, sink the seat back down, inhale, come up, push the seat towards the front heel, allow the head to go back, try to keep the back body long, no wrinkles in the lower back, and circle the arms down. Keep your seat low this time, circle the arms up, cut the asana, pull the arms again, back. As far as you can, keep the arms straight, so give a crescent when they don't have any kinks along the, along the line, a smooth curve. Reach back, and then from here, break the pose. Come forward again, bring the hands down on either side of the right foot, the left foot comes in to make the right. Chest on the thighs, telescope your chest towards the knees, and then take the head down towards the ground. A gesture of object humility, surrender. And come all the way up. Reach up, open yourself to divine grace. Reflect the intention through your movements, hands back to the heart, gesture of gratitude. Raise your arms up again, reach up. Engage the bugs to support you in your movements. And then come forward and down into Uttanasana. Chest again, lands on your thighs. Join the hands and bow down humbly. Push the legs back with your body. Imagine your knees, your chest can go below the knees. And then release, left foot back. Lower the knee down, sit down to the seat. Inhale, rise up again. Lift the seat, turn to the right this time. Now with the gesture of turning, you open yourself up to new experiences, to all perspectives. Be receptive, as we say in the Dharma Yoga tradition quite often, and open up to the right. Now turn forward, Kapyasana again. Make like a crescent moon, join hands together, index fingers point, a smooth curve from point to point, from the toes to the fingertips. And then come back down. Plant your hands, and then from here, come either into plank, or if you feel comfortable, raise the right leg up all the way up. Come forward, shoulders over the fingertips. Again, glue the outside of the body, push to the base of the toes, 
and then lower your chest down, or you can bring your knee down at the same time as your chest comes down. Into the cobra, toes go from the neck on the shoulders. Roll over your toes, round your back, and then sink the heart, arch the back, soften the line, the back body. Then if you can, lift the left leg up. Set the foot between the hands, move your shoulders forward and over the fingertips so the foot lands softly. Lower the knee down, sink down to the seat, raise your arms up. Open up to your left. Remember every pose, everything you do in offering. Raise your arms up, so make every movement the best, the best that you can. Pleasing to the witness who's always watching the supreme witness. Turn to the left. This time, face forward, sink your seat down, and take the arms back behind the ears. Karapiyasana. Point to the fingertips, stretch the arms, lengthen the torso. And then break the pose. Come forward again. Hands come down beside your left foot, and right foot comes in, beat the left. Chest again, lands on the legs, and then go down deep. Plunge the head towards the earth. Feel as though the top of the head can touch the feet at any moment. And then release. Come right up to standing, reach up and back. Hands back to the heart. Try a couple more, different variation, reach up and back. Fold forward. Belly on your thighs. Lift the head and chest. This time you can either hop or walk back. Push into the hands. And these go back, bend your elbows so you land softly. No big jarring landing, no heavy landings. If you can, upward facing dog. Lift the hips and knees away from the ground. Imagine you had a hinge at the tops of your thighs and you're making as though you're bending your body in half. Try not to get jam up the lower back, keep telescoping body around the hips, neck out the shoulders. Make like a dog howling at the moon here. Now round your back, tuck the chin in, roll over your toes, back into downward facing dog. Pulse a little bit through the chest. Try to get your chest closer to the ground. Your belly comes closer to your thighs. If you can, you can tap your head to the ground, the top of the head, if you're more flexible. You might be able to bring your forehead, your nose, maybe even your chin to the ground. Try not to bend the arms. Keep pushing the floor away from you with your hands. And now lift the heels, bend the knees. Bring your feet forward. It helps sometimes to hold your breath so you jump lightly. Pull the body down onto your legs. Come right up to stand, you reach up and back. Hands back to the heart. Raise your arms again. Go down gracefully. Hands to the ground. On either side of the feet, lift the head and chest, push into your hands, hold your breath. And again, back we go either hopping or walking, right into upward facing dog. This time oscillate between two forms, forms. Round your back as you transitioning and then soften the line in the back as you come to downward facing dog. Again, two more times, you roll over your toes, round your back, push the belly button to the front of the spine. Push your chest forward as you turn to push it right through the cage, back the other way. Round your back, imagine you push your heart right up between your shoulder blades and back down the heart words of ground. One more time. Roll over your toes. Come forward. All the movements graceful. Imagine you're doing, this is your divine dance of devotion. Round your back and sink your heart back into downward facing dog. And now lift the heels, bend the knees up between your hands. Bring your feet forward, hopping or walking. Pull the body down onto your legs. Come right up to stand and reach up and back. Hands back to the heart. Let's do one more. Raise your arms over the head, reach up and back. And then come down gracefully. Now from here, if you like, you can either just shift forward, lift your heels, keep your arms straight, push firmly into the ground with your hands, and see if you can get your shoulders right over your fingertips. Come right on your toes and back. 
rock back onto your heels, lift the toes. You can do this. If you feel more comfortable, you can maybe incorporate a float, push into your hands, into the ground again, and then lift up. Hold your breath as you lift up. Hips over your wrists. Do this three times. Eyes, the elbows facing forward. So externally rotate the upper arms, the eyes, the elbows are facing forward. Hug the arm bones into the sides of the body. And then from here you can jump back. If you like, you can do it. Raise your legs up. Bend your elbows and back. So that's again for advanced practitioners. If you feel apt to do so. Into upward facing dog. Stretch feels all your dog howling at the moon. Imitate the form, remember, copy them on all levels. Think of imitation as the highest form of reverence. You want to be just like what you're representing. Now roll over your toes, downward facing dog. Exhibit the loyalty of the dog to its master in this shape. Mm. Stretch your back just like a dog stretches its back. Now lift the heels, bend the knees. So again, you can just come forward, round your back, shoulders or the fingertips. Come all the way back, right into squat if you can, all the way forward and back. You can do this three times. If again you want, press down to the base of fingers, grip the floor with your finger pads and heels, your palms. Belly to your thighs, hold your breath and see if you can come up. Hovering the hips right over the wrists. And then for a time you land, perhaps your feet closer, right, maybe right in between your hands. Pull the body down onto your legs. Come all the way up, reach up and back. And come back home, hands to the heart. Take a deep breath in from the heart up to the space between the eyebrows. Exhale back down to the heart, remove all expectations, all attachments to results. And release. And remain established in compassion all throughout the practice. Put yourself in the shoes of all beings. So now some bouncing poses. Standing on your left foot first. Let's raise your right heel up. Take hold of the heel from the inside. Into ballet pose. So you try to get your fingers and toes to the same height. So it might look like a T. If you're more flexible, bring the foot up higher. Try to get close to the shoulder, lean to your left so you can still keep your fingers and toes at the same height. Now if you can, we're going to move into another form here. Place your left hand on your left hip, push down into your hip, move the foot forward. From here you can bend your knee if you like to take hold of the big toe with your two piece fingers and your thumb. Now push up to the base of the foot. If you feel comfortable, you can lean back a little bit. Pull the foot up higher. Modification is to maybe take the knee and bring your belly to your thigh. And then if you feel comfortable, you can lean back, bend your standing leg a little bit, your left leg. So this is an option as well. And from here, let's keep on moving. Lean forward. If you need to, you bring your fingertips to the ground, your index fingers, raise right leg up higher. If you can do it without dropping your hands to the ground, you can either do eagle with your arms out, uh, spread out like the wings of a great bird, or join your hands together, toppling tree. Palms open and pull the hands over your shoulders. Your head comes with the height of the knee. Arch your back, bring your head forward a little bit. Try to raise a foot higher than the, sh than the head. Whoops. If whatever happens, remain unconcerned. Just do your best. It's the effort that's most important. Now press into your left foot and come back up. So try it now on the other side. Standing firm on the right foot. Pretend, imagine your ballet dancer, graceful and poised. Take hold of your left heel and try to raise your arm and leg at the same time. You can always stand against the wall if you like to as well, if you're having trouble balancing. If you can't um, 
hold your leg up very easily. You can hold your head, your bring your hand underneath, just beside your knee, on the shin. Or come up higher. Be magnificent and poised like the dancer. Now bring a right hand to your right hip. Move the foot forward. Take hold of the big toe with your two piece fingers and the thumb. Extend the leg again. Push the base of the toe forward, base of the big toe, and lean back. Try to get your foot higher. Again, if you need to, just take the knee. Hug the shin to the belly and send the shoulders back a little bit. Open up the chest. Now from here, moving into gliding eagle or toppling tree. Release the foot, stay firm. You bring weight more over your toes. Really press into the base of the toes. And then you can fly arms out to the side or join your hands. Open up your palms, toppling tree. Try to get your left foot up higher. Sink your chest about the height of the knee, but bring your head forward a little bit so you get that nice curve in your spine. Do the modifications you need to again. Bring your fingertips to the ground if you need to. At any point, if you feel like you're losing your balance. But whatever happens, remember, just do your best. Don't worry about the results. And then release. Push into right foot and come back up. Good. Since that was a long sequence, we'll go on. So actually, step in the middle of the mat, facing along the edge of the mat. So when you go to your left, if you can't see the camera, then you just turn around this way. Just turn to face the camera. Bring your fingertips on the same height as the elbow and jump your arms and your legs apart like a big star. Open up to your left. Virabhadrasana 2. If you can, sink down to the seat a little bit. Try to get your seat nice and low so that when you swing your right arm down, your fingers might even touch the ground. Strong and mighty and courageous like the warrior. And then bring the right arm up to meet the left. Virabhadrasana 1. Look up to the fingertips. If you can't scratch the hips, you can lift your back heel, lift the and then turn on the base of the toes. Reach up, try to have a straight line from the base of the spinal right up to the fingertips. Suppose it exemplifies the devotion of a warrior. Now lower the knee down, flatten out the toes, kapyasana. Revisiting this pose, walk your shoulders back. Try to pull the arms beside or maybe behind the ears. As you do so, keep pushing your chest forward and up. Lift the torso, lift the lower back and press it in. If you know other variations, go ahead. For instance, you can maybe turn to your right. Bring the right foot up if you know that variation. Take the foot in the crook of the arm. Fingers close to the ear. So when your left arm comes up and the, hand, the, elbow, the arm bends, you might be able to take your hands more easily. Then push the foot away from your shoulder. Try to create a nice smooth curve like the swan's neck with your both, both arms. Now break the pose, bring the foot close to the shoulder and release it down. From here we're going to turn forward. Walk your left foot out more to your left. Slide your right foot back. Glide it back and then drop to your right. Try to get your right form down. Roll to your left, see if your left form comes down. So I'm going to do it this way so you can see. You don't want to have any falling away from your shoulder. So you need to just move the foot out a little bit so the knee and the toes stay in the, the heels stay in the same line. If however, if, and you don't want that, you want to avoid this as well with your knee close and your foot far away. So try to have your hips even. Your left step point coming down. Now if you keep telescoping your chest forward, perhaps eventually you feel heavy in the hips. Maybe the pelvis will follow, will come down, fall by the belly, eventually maybe even the chest. 
Keep elongating the spine, keep moving forward, maybe the body will come lower. Be like a lizard setting itself on a warmer. Now push into your hands, come back up. Bring your left foot in a little bit so that it's underneath the knee. Come upright, bend the toes under in the back foot. Right arm comes up. If you're a little bit limited in your mobility, you can take your right hand to the outside of the knee. Left hand stays on the sacrum. Inhale, push into the head into the sacrum and pull down the same time as you exhale and twist to your left, over your left shoulder. If you want, you can bring lean back, bring the left hand to the outside of the heel, and you can push the knee and the foot towards the right as you turn towards the left. Keep your upper back, keep your lower back lifted, pushing up and in. If this is already giving you enough of the challenge, you stay here. If you want to go further, turn forward, right arm up, dive down to the left. The armpits stay on the outside of the knee, left hand pushes into the right, and you have to push hard so that as you're pushing down, the belly comes up higher in the thigh. The center of the chest moves towards the thumbs and then keep pushing against the outside of the knee and try to get your chest to turn up. Eventually it looks like you're lying on your back, perhaps your left shoulders at the same height from the ground. If you know the bind, go ahead. You push the seat back. So you create more space between your shin and your seat. And then from here, your elbows in the space, in the free space underneath, use your left hand on the elbow to guide the right hand underneath. Left arm goes then over the back. You join the fingers together, lock them together, or you hold the left wrist with your right hand and bring the, left, the right knee up off the ground if you can is the last step. Left shoulder moves all the way back. Telescope, your head forward, your chest forward. From here, release. Bring your right hand down to the ground from the right shoulder. Push the hip seat back. Turn towards the left. You can cross the left ankle from the right. Vasisthasana. Push your hips up. Straight line from hand to hand. If you want, you can stack your feet as well. Or you can do other variations. Perhaps you can slide your left toes back alongside the right knee. Spin on the heel of the palm. Come into wild thing. If you want, you can keep on going. If you have show mobility, just keep spinning on your hand, the left hand and the right hand, left side, uh, the left hand, left foot, left beside the right hand, right foot. Or for Dhanurasana. Stretch the whole front of the body. And then return. Spin on the heel of palm, keep your hip high. Your arm fully extended to come back into downward facing dog. Breathe in. Breathe out all fatigue. Relax. And from here, bring the left foot forward. Spin towards long edge of the mat. Come right back up into that star shape. And then turn to the right. Again, make the adjustments, turn the other way if you need to, in order to be able to see the camera still. And then the screen, and then reach forward. Stay long and strong. Embody all the characteristics of a warrior. They're already within. And then sweep the left arm up over the head. There's a portion of God that exists in every being tap into that divine essence of every being. But we are all one. Sharing that common thread that ties us together. Now from here, lower the back knee down, flatten out the toes. Kapiyasana. Push your chest up. So make sure again when you lean back, you're not making a big fold in the other side in the lower back. Pull the torso up by the hips. Reach back. If you want to do the swan again, you can go ahead. 
turn to your left, bring your foot up, close the shoulder so that you really pull the foot into the crook of the elbow, bend the arm deeply so your fingers come right beside your head. And then when the right arm comes up and bends down, your fingers find one another more easily. And then you can push the foot away from the shoulder. Again, according to your condition, your abilities. Don't go to a place of pain or anxiety or distress or suffering. This is, this is what you will, other, others will feel through your experience. Break the pose, pull the foot back towards the shoulder. So let it down softly. Now turn towards the front. Right foot moves out to the long edge of the mat. <clears throat> the right side and then see if you can roll all the way, fall towards your left. Left hip perhaps anchors down, left forearm, roll back to the right. If the hands almost don't come down easily, don't worry about it. Just keep on your hands. And keep right, uh, pulling your chest forward. But if you imagine that the hips, they have weights in your hip pockets. The hips sink heavily, followed by the belly, the chest, and so on, the chin. Fix your gaze like a lizard. And now from here, we're going to come back up onto the hands. Pull the right foot in a little bit closer. Bend the toes under and the back foot. Your legs should look like a box here. Left arm up. Take the hands to the outside of the knee and the hand on the seat. Push in and pull down at the same time. The inhale, push in. Legs in the spine, lift the chest. As you exhale, really pull the tailbone down under over your back shoulder. If you want, you can reach down. If you can, lean back. See if you can get the right hand to the outside of the left foot. Push the knee and the foot towards the left as you turn towards the right more. Now you can stay here if that's already giving you enough of an edge. Or left arm comes up. Dive down, angle the tone and knee towards the left. Keep the knee and the foot in the same line. Again, start your hands at the shoulders, but then push down the right hand to your left, so that and raise the body at the same time, so the center of the chest comes to your thumbs. Roll the right shoulder all the way back, bit by bit. Inhale, toss, push the right side seat back. Extend head forward. Exhale, go deeper. Again, if you know other variations, go ahead. You can take the bind if you feel like you can. Maybe take the back knee up off the ground as well. Pull the right shoulder all the way back. Right from here, break the pose. The left hand comes in front of the shoulder. This helps to keep the arm extended. From here, spin towards the right. Vasti Stasana. You can cross the right foot in front of the left. You can stack the feet. Now again, you can move your right toes back if you like. Coming into uh, wild things. Spin on the left heel, the palm, keep your hips high, your arm extended. And then if you feel comfortable, if you have the shoulder mobility, keep spinning on your hand, the feet, and the hands land one beside the other. Vadangasana. According to your condition as always, and your abilities. And then return, spin on the left heel of the palm, keep your hip high, your shoulder stays a little bit behind your hands, and back into downward facing dog. Breathe in, breathe out. Now bring the right foot forward to the, between the hands, spin on the long edge of the mat, on towards the long edge of the mat, arms out to the side and come all the way up. Now from here, we're going to do this way, easy to cross and up. pull the heels in a little bit. You have the feet about the distance of the mat, the toes beyond the edges of the mat. Hands to the seat, and then from here, bend your knees, your knees come over your 
your toes sort of like you're riding a horse and at the same time bring your head back keep your weight forward over your toes and then if you feel comfortable you, can keep, you need to keep your hands on the seat like this keep pulling tail down and under stay heavy on the feet or move the right hand down to the just below the knee left hand moves down just below the knee then you have good control here you roll the thighs outwards roll the shins inwards you'll notice that the thumbs will come a little bit further in between if you're more flexible you can keep going down the backs of your legs so you might be able to step on your fingers with your heels now try to push your hips forward and up keep the spiral going however the thighs keep rolling outwards the shins keep rolling inwards Now from here, making your way up. Walk your hands up the backs and legs one at a time. Once you're on the seat, push into the seat, pull down at the same time, and come back up. Now arms up to the side. Bring your heels up a little bit so the edges of the feet are parallel. And let's try this one. Take your hands behind the back, interlace the fingers. Inhale, push the chest up, the head back. Exhale, cross Anita Palatanasana. Hinge at the hips. See if you can bring your head down towards the ground. Maybe some of you might be able to get your head right down to the ground. You're very flexible in your shoulders. Keep pulling your hands forward. So you try to get them in front of your head on the ground. If it's too much for your shoulders, you can take all your opposite elbows here and just hug your back with your arms. So this again, don't force to a place where you are in pain or anxious, in some way suffering. This is not what you want to send out. Good. Now if your head is on the ground, you can place the hands beside your head, lift your head and chest. So from here, a few options. You can walk your hands under the shoulders. And from here, lift the heels and come back and do this a few times like this or you can go down onto your forearms and do the same thing with your hands forward if you need to and then lift your heels if okay so a few different options those who feel comfortable you need to move the elbows back and leave the shoulders you might be able to struggle right up into a forearm stand or in a handstand if you're on your hands you can alternately bring your head down to the ground between your, uh, between your wrists. Again, according to your ability level. And if you're up in some form of inversion, come down. Engage your core quite a bit more as you come in close. Your feet come close to the ground so you can land your feet very softly. Try not to land a big heavy crash landing or anything like that okay so control the movements come back up with your head and then follow all the way up with your arms one more easy to prasana pull your heels again towards one another uh, towards one another your toes pointing out hands on the seat push into seat pull down bend your knees and start to make your way down stay heavy on your feet really press through the edges of your feet and if you feel comfortable, again, walk your hands down the backs of your legs. Once your head's on the backs of the knees, push your hips forward and up so your legs straighten a little bit more. If you want, you can walk your hands further down. If you have the flexibility, right to the ground or just step on your fingers with your heels. Know your level, know your limitations, know your abilities. Through the practice, we become more familiar, attuned. And now walk your way back up, one at a time. Walk hands back up the legs. Once we're in the seat, push into the seat, pull down, and come back up. Arms out to the side. And then jump your feet together, arms by the sides of the body. Standing tall into Dasana, mountain pose. From the base of the spine, imagine the base of the mountain. 
Inhale all the way up to the crown. Imagine as the summit, the mountain. Exhale all the way back down. Remain solid and unshakable, unmovable in your devotion to the practice. Now from here, um, let's see. Okay, so we're going to open up the feet a little bit. Bring your arms forward, the wrists hanging down. Turn your feet out and come down into a squat. Push the elbows and the inside of the knees. Try to get your wrists in line with your elbows. Push your knees outwards. Kakasana. Bring your hands down. So you want to adjust so that you have your shoulders squeezing against the, um, your knees squeezing into the shoulders and vice versa. So you're going to rock forward. The weight comes into the base of the the wrists, the base of the fingers, and the finger pads. Push into the ground firmly as though you're pushing the floor down and lift the heels and come back. Okay, so you transfer it gradually into all areas it has base of the fingers, the finger pads, grip the floor, the fingertips. Your shoulders come over your, your, uh, your fingertips. And if you feel like you can, you lift your toes, you flick your toes away from the ground. So you start by pressing into the toes, Lift the heels, squeeze your elbows and your knees together, and then raise the feet. Okay, so you can try that. If you don't feel comfortable with your feet, of course, stay on the ground. If you feel more comfortable, once you're in crow pose, try to keep your head close, um, higher than the, uh, the rest of the body, the seat. Bend your elbows, and then tuck your chin in. Forehead comes down. Try not to fall on your head. Control it. You have to squeeze your elbows, your, your shoulders, your knees with your shoulders. If you feel comfortable, you can come right up into teddy bear. The knees sitting on the backs of the arms, close the shoulders. If you feel even more comfortable, you can bring your legs up, headstand. And from here, you come back down. If you want to try to land your knees on your upper arms again, go ahead. A little bit to the outside, so squeezing your knees to the shoulders again. Flick your toes out. Hold your breath and see if you can get your head up. Back into crow. And back down. Good. Rest for a moment, child's pose. Forehead to the ground, breathe in. Breathe out all fatigue. <clears throat> Good, roll your way up. Okay, so we're going to try one more, if you like. You can do the same thing as we did. Um, not the same thing, but um, actually, ah, uh, scratch that, I forget I said that. But basically, um, you can do a headstand with your head between your wrists. Make sure your elbows are not too wide apart. They should be actually a little bit closer in than the shoulders. Your fingers are spread and your head comes between your wrists. Those of you who feel comfortable can really push into the ground and lift your head up. Or you can start with your head up off the ground. So a few different options. Okay, the head on the ground is a little bit more steady. And you can even do this without raising your feet up off the ground. So you place... Your elbows on the ground underneath your shoulders, your seat's back on your heels. Make sure you can take your elbows easily. That's the right distance. Don't move your elbows now. Bring your hands forward, spread your fingers. And then from here, lift your seat. See if you can bring your head down between your wrists, just against the wrists. The, the top of the head, the other side is just against the wrists. And from here, you can just stay here and just lift your heels up and down. Stay here. You can do it with your head up as well. It takes a little bit more core. You'll feel it when you lift your heels, your core engaging. And from here, you can raise one leg up, push up the foot. So do it very lightly. Don't jump too hard. You land on your back. Okay, so keep your feet close to your elbows and bounce up and down. Little by little, pull the toes away from the ground. Keep your other foot that's behind your back heavily suspended towards the ground to provide yourself a little bit of counterweight to come up. 
Okay, you can do it with your head on the ground as well. It's a little bit easier to do it with your head on the ground first. And once you come up, at some point, hold the breath, really push into your hands, into your forearms, and just lift your head. Bring the forehead forward, lift your chin. Okay, so you can try a few of those different things. So go ahead. Remember, stay strong through the arms, your shoulders above the elbows. If you bent very far down, your your if you have your shoulders more of your wrists, you won't have as, as much strength to come up. So try to have your shoulders over your elbows as opposed to your wrists. So bend your toes, the back foot hanging heavily towards the ground behind you. Feel free to just keep your head down on the ground the whole time if you'd rather. And then come back down. Relax in child's pose. Breathe in. Breathe out. Relax. And roll your way up. We're going to make our way into shoulder stand. Bring your legs in front. <coughs> the front of the mat and we're going to roll right back into it from here roll back push into your arms and set your feet behind your head try to get your seat up high over your shoulders move your hands together so you can join them together behind the back from the front if you're looking at yourself head on you won't be see your arms or your elbows at all they're right behind your back and then from here, you can place your hands on your back, fingers facing towards the sky, your wrists about mid-back. And then if you feel comfortable, raise your legs one or both at a time. If you need to modify, you don't have to bring your legs all the way up. You can just allow your seat to sit in your hands, support your seat and just allow your legs to come whichever height you can. And even if it's too much, you can just keep your legs up heels over the hips and just sit on your hands, the palms are down. You can do this against the wall if you like. Push your hips forward so you have a straight line from the toes to the chin. If you have a lotus, you may take your lotus to make the line more one-pointed. Feel free to use your hands to help get into the lotus. And if you're in a lotus, try to have your knees higher than the hips. Sometimes the tendency is to have the knees, the thighs looking like a table, flat. Try to get your knees up as high as you can. So it looks more like shoulder stand. If you're right on top of the shoulders, you can also take your hands to your thighs. Leave the body by itself. Go inward beyond the body, the mind, and the emotions. Now from here, Pindasana, if you have a lotus, you bring your thighs against your body. If you know how to take the bind, go ahead. You wrap your arms around the outsides of the legs. And join your hands underneath the seat. It's not accessible if you don't have a lotus. Just come down into plow. Control the descent again so the feet land very softly behind your head. If your feet don't touch the ground, keep pushing gently with your hands so your seat is over your shoulders and maybe the feet will come down. If not, don't force it. Just it'll happen when it happens. Remain your Ensure you're steady and comfortable. If you like, you can bring your thighs against your, your belly and your knees on either side of the head. Go deeper within, beyond the body, your mind, the emotions, all the senses coming in through the sense organs.
anything when you come back now, slowly. Put your hands behind your back, palms down, thumb tips and index fingers touching. Lower your legs down gradually. And once your seat lands on your wrists, keep bringing your legs down, stop when you're 45 degrees from. And then push into your hands, lift your trunk up off the mat. Bring your elbows close together, keep your legs charged. Now push your chest up and see if you can get your head to the ground. If you need to, you bring your feet all the way down. Push your chest up, your elbows underneath your heart, and then breathe very fast and nose like a sniffing dog. And then bring your feet down close to your seat. Take your hands out from underneath your seat. Bring your fingertips on the other side of the head. Take a half breath in, lift your seat. Slide your head further back towards your feet and then turn your hands around, fingers facing a little bit to the outside, but also towards the feet. Now from here, you can stay here. If this is too much, you just stay in, you just come into bridge, shoulders and the back of the head on the ground. Feel comfortable, take a half breath in and lift your head up off the ground. Word for the ultimate back bend. Now shift back and forth if you like. Try to get your chest forward in front of your arms. Rock back. So if you lift your heels, you can do this a little bit more easily. If you know other variations, of advanced practitioners, of course, go ahead and explore them. You can see if you can take up one foot. Let's say you can raise your left leg up, bring your knee into your chest. And raise the left leg up. Stay up a little bit longer if you can. And then maybe take that leg down and then the other leg up um, comes up. Just to get warmed up. And then down. And see if you can take your right hand up off the ground onto your thigh. And then the other hand, of course. Just get used to moving between the forms. Just visualize yourself doing it with ease and perhaps this will translate into your movement. And then maybe raise your left leg up again. Come on to your index finger, all but the index finger of the right hand. Charge the leg. Really push down into your left hand. Perhaps at some point you can release the hand entirely. And then try it on the other side. Again, these are all options. At any point you need to break the pose, come down, but try to stay up. Practice stamina. The right foot comes up. This time, come on to your just all but your index finger with the right hand, left hand. Again, hold your breath. Really push down the right hand. See if you can take your left hand up off the mat. And from here, lower down. The Dharma G is always, if you do his master classes, he's always challenging, always finding different ways hmm, to explore the different forms, experience everything. Be grateful to experience all of this. Even if you can't do it perfectly, just keep trying. Do your best. Now take a deep breath in. Exhale, imagine you're fainting like go of all fatigue. Good, now from here, sit up, any which way you like. Starting off with Paschimottanasana. Raise your arms up and then go forward. If you have tight hamstrings, you start with your knees bent. Raise your arms up and then you can stay like this depending on your condition of your of your, your um, hamstrings. You can hug your legs, your body like so, or take hold of the edge of the feet. If you can get your legs straight, as Dharma G says, don't waste your time, go right into the pose. Bring your attention to the base of the spine. Feel all the blood rushing out through your tension. Keep creeping your chest further forward so you're trying to get beyond the knees.
and come back up. <clears throat> Open up your feet a little bit. This is um, Karmasana, the, the modification. Slide your forearms underneath and see if you can tickle the edges of the feet. If your shoulders are higher than the knees, then you can stay like this. See if you can bring your head to the ground, even if you have a block and place your forehead on the block. Um, somewhere you, you place your, your blocks are in between your heels. And then come down. If you're more flexible, if you can get your shoulders lower than the knees, and bring your hands to the side, your hips, fingers facing back, slide the heels forward, Kamasana. Your legs land on your upper arms closer to the shoulder. Eventually try to get your belly down. Fall by the chest, fall by the chin. If your elbows are free, those you know how to take the bind, join your hands over your back. Touch again the base of the spine. <clears throat> now release. Come out of the pose. Bring your hands behind the back. <clears throat> and from here, you can either do Purvottanasana or bench pose. Doing Purvottanasana, slide your fields, feet in a little bit. Fingers are facing back. And from here, sink your belly button into the front of the spine and lift your hips, throw your hips up, roll the thighs inwards. Try to get your toes to touch. If you're like this, it's going to be hard to sustain the pose. So just try to push into your toes by rolling the thighs um, towards one another. Try to get your chest high in the shoulders, your hips higher than your, your hips as high as you can. If it's too much, you bring your feet under your heels, underneath your knees. Bench pose. Keep your chest up, head back, breathe very fast. Tuck your chin in and lower the seat down. From here, extend the legs. And be careful of your shoulders here. See if you can slide your arms all the way back. Open up your hands a little bit more, a little bit wider. And you try to get your lower back to come right down. Your armpits, as you get more flexible, are coming closer to the ground as well. Again, do be very mindful of your shoulders. Don't push, don't go to a place of pain. I'll bring the right knee up towards the forehead. Back down left knee and back both knees if you can and back now from here one at a time push into your left hand slide the right hand a little bit closer push into the right hand slide the left hand closer and continue so from here cross your ankles make your way onto your belly Starting off with Cobra, if you need to, you can stay in Sphinx. Take hold of the front end of the mat and pull on the mat so you're trying to stretch the mat, your elbows underneath the shoulders. As you pull the mat forward, lift your head, anchor down to the lower body from the hips all the way to the, uh, your hips, your thighs, and your tops of your feet. Now you can stay here if you want, to lift your elbows up, uh, make a C shape with your spine. Try to keep your inner sides of the feet together like the tail of a snake. Now, if you feel apt to do so, you can let go of the front of the mat, come up higher bit by bit by moving your hands closer in towards the body. Each time you rise up a little bit taller, push the chest forward so you get, you keep on making the attention of lengthening your lower back, creating space there, not jamming it up even closer. Maybe coming right, right onto your fingertips and the whole torso from the top of your thighs up is up off the ground. 
Those who are flexi can separate your feet and then bend your knees. Imagine holding socks behind your knees. Try to get your toes to your head. If you get your toes to your head, you can eventually flatten your hands down again. Break the pose, come down slowly. Relax. Stack your hands and then just place your forehead on your hands. Breathe in. Breathe out. Next pose, you can stay in that, stay with the cobra if you like, or bend your knees up. Take hold of your feet, Danyurasana. On the half, inhale halfway, lift up your chest, and really push your feet back away from your head. Try to get your heels over your knees. You can stay here if you like, or keep tugging on your feet so the feet come up, up off, the thighs come up off the ground. Keep pulling on your feet. Maybe at some point you'll be able to see your toes if you can get your feet up higher than the head. Pull the shoulders back. Push your chest forward. If you know the full expression of the pose, go ahead. Be a very advanced practitioner. If you can, bend the toes under on one foot. Take your foot out to the side a little bit more so you can take the base of the thumb, uh, the thumb to the base of the foot, have the fingers around the outer edge of the foot. Pull the foot up high so it's higher than the shoulder, so the elbow's higher than the shoulder. And then when you move your elbow forward, you're not straining the shoulder. And once you have the foot, really hold it firmly. Do the same thing on the other side. Bring the foot up again. Try to get your foot high as possible so you can get your shoulder high than the, oh, high than the shoulder. And then you can come into this form. Only again if you know how to do it, if you're familiar with the pose. Be mindful in your practice. Break the pose carefully. If you're in the up, full expression, bring your feet close to your head. Let go one foot at a time. Try not to fly out of the poses with um, no control. Stack your forehead, top your hands, breathe in. Breathe out. Soften. Hands underneath the shoulders. Make your way up into the table. And then sit back on your heels. Adhanatyandrasana. If you can, you fold your left leg. Your foot comes beside your right hip, not underneath your seat beside. And your left, your right foot comes on the other side of the left knee. So if you can get both sides of the seat grounded, you can stay in this pose. If you can't, you can either sit on the block or just extend the left leg. Simple fix. And then you move your foot out a little bit further beyond your knee if you're doing this pose. I'll do demonstrate this way first. Right hand, right against the back, center of the back, left arm up. And then take your arm to the outside of the thigh. You need to push the lower back up and in. Turn to the right. Shoulders in line with the top of with the far the long side of the mat. If you have the leg folded, you can do the same thing. Or you can even take hold of your heel, tug on the heel, push against the knee, lift the back of the arm, the shoulder, and vice versa. You might be able to twist a little bit more deeper. Take other variations if you know them. Sit up tall if you inhale. Push the lower back up and in. Exhale. Keep pushing the shoulder into the knee, the knee into the shoulder. Come back, change your legs. Either keeping your right leg extended or folding the right leg so that the foot's beside your seat to get your, your left side of your seat. Right arm up, go to your left. 
Imagine trying to push the knee way beyond the right side of the body. Look over your left shoulder. Feel so you can see right through your skin at the spiraling action of the spine. Use your imagination to visualize the effect that you're trying to get. The whole body turns eventually, even the chin and the head. And then break the pose. <clears throat> Lie down on your back softly. Make your way down. No big heavy landings. Again, always moving in a way that's pleasing to the women to watch. Never be not being aggressive with your body. So that you transmit that gentleness to all those who you're serving. All beings, in fact. Lie down on your back. Softly. And then just relax everything. Take a deep breath in. Gather up all the tension in the body wherever it happens to reside, wherever you feel any kind of restriction or tightness. Exhale, just allow it to just funnel right out of the body. Soften. Inhale again. Try to muster up all the tension in the body. Whether it be in the physical, mental, or emotional sense. Exhale, drain it right out of the body. <coughs> One more time, inhale. Gather up any negativity that you have within. This can come in the form of just negative thoughts or emotions, fear, struggle, any kind of struggle, anything that you want to be rid of. Exhale, let it all go. Everything happens for a reason. Every ha everything happens in a perfect way for you to experience everything in the most, most beneficial way. All is according to the divine plan that brings us all ultimately to the state of self-realization where we realize our true nature, which is divine, which is immortal, stainless, eternal. Through the practice, we gain all the benefits. We don't try not to attach those benefits. They come anyways. But you attract all the benefits through the practice that can be also offered to God, to all beings. And even when you're off the mat, offer up all your actions, thoughts, and words. And when you are coming into the intention again of offering up all that, you ensure, you have more of a tendency to ensure that you're giving the best, transmitting the best of the best. To bring them into higher, all beings into a higher state of being, a more happy state of being. Now, prepare to bring that out into the world. In all your interactions with all beings, both animals and humans, maybe, maybe even the plants, be grateful for them. And express your gratitude towards them through acts of loving kindness, compassion. Have compassion towards all beings. For you once have experienced perhaps what they are going through or will. 
we all had to pass through everything. So now let's come back to see the position with that ingrained, that intention ingrained in our mind. Exercising love and boundless compassion towards going to end with Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Instill the peace within, send it out to all beings everywhere. Om Shanti 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 receptive to the grace of God, all is within. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining. So next week, I'll probably have to adjust the timing or the day again. Um, sorry, there's just lots of things going on, but um, after that, hopefully it'll settle down a little bit. So I'll just keep... Um, just um, just watch the page for any news about next week, about when I'm going to do the class, probably Sunday. All right. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Much love.